There are monsters out in the cosmos that can swallow entire stars. You can't even see it. That is disturbing and exciting at the same time. Where reality and illusion are one and the same. It sounds like science fiction, only it's better because it's real. Its name, a black hole. I find the questions of these mysteries intriguing. And like you, I've got a lot of questions. Through the Wormhole with Morgan Freeman. All new episode next Wednesday at 10 on Science Channel. The rise of the machines is close at hand. Already, computers are taking over many of the day-to-day -day functions in our world. Are they already in charge? Is our creator some kind of cosmic computer genius? Rich Terrell thinks we might be living in some kind of giant simulation. That our creator might be using a supercomputer with godlike powers. And he thinks he's found evidence for it in nature. There is one surefire way to tell if you're looking at a computer simulation. Zoom in. Every computer-generated image, no matter how realistic, breaks down into pixels when you get close enough. You might think this doesn't happen in the real world, but you'd be wrong. In the past century, physicists have discovered that matter really is made of tiny little pixels. Fundamental, indivisible particles billions of times smaller than an atom. The theory that explains all this, quantum mechanics, applies not just to matter, but to the entire universe. Look at the way the universe behaves. Uh, it's quantized. It's made of pixels. It's made of individual atoms. Space is quantized. Time is quantized. Energy is quantized. Everything is made of individual pixels, which means the universe has a finite number of components, which means it has a finite number of states, which means it's computable. Quantum mechanics means it's possible everything we see could really be produced by lines of code inside a powerful computer. But are there any signs the universe is actually being computed? In the physics lab at Caltech, an experiment that's now almost 100 years old offers a vital clue. We're in a small room at the physics lab at Caltech looking at, exp at an experiment that was originally done in 1928. This experiment takes an electron beam and transmits it through a piece of graphite. And what we're looking at is the electrons kind of going through the graphite and forming this kind of diffuse blob. Now, an interesting thing is when we focus the beam on the graphite, we find a very, very interesting pattern. The experiment consists of a gun which fires electrons at a target of graphite atoms and a collecting screen to record how they ricochet off. If this apparatus was scaled up a billion times and the gun fired real bullets, the pattern on the collecting screen would just be a random smear of bullet holes. But in the scaled-down subatomic world, the electron ricochets are not random. The pattern on the screen reflects the pattern of atoms in the target. Each electron seems to sense where every atom in the graphite is, even though the target is much bigger than it. It's as if the electrons are not dots, but spread out. The electrons somehow know where all the atoms are, and they form this diffraction pattern. The experiment shows something really rather extraordinary, and that is that matter, even though it behaves when you're looking at it, when you're measuring it as individual particles, when you're not measuring it, matter is diffuse. It spreads out. It doesn't have a finite form in the universe. These basic rules of quantum mechanics apply to all tiny subatomic particles. When we look at them, they are just dots. When we look away, they lose their physical form. A different way of looking at that is to say, well, how parallel is this behavior with what I see in my PlayStation 3 when I'm playing a video game? In a PlayStation 3, and for an example of that is SimCity. It's an enormous city. I can navigate my way through every bit of it because the PlayStation, the, the video game, gives me the frame that I need when I'm looking there. If I look somewhere else, it'll create that frame. Well, oddly enough, the universe behaves that way in reality. The universe gives you what you're looking at when you're looking at it. When you're not looking at it, it's not necessarily there. Our world is pixelated. 
and only assumes definite form when observed, the very same way our computer simulations behave. Rich Terrell has tried to work out the probability that we might be living in a simulation to quantify the possibility that there is a God. The question is, how likely is something like that to happen? And how likely is it that it has already happened in our universe? Now let's step back from that a little bit and say, well, you know, the universe is 13.7 billion years old, and here I am 50 years from basically being able to manufacture God. What's the probability that I would be so close to that threshold and not be across the other side? It's, it's one chance in 300 million that I would be that close. It's an extraordinary coincidence, and perhaps, more likely than not, maybe we are a simulation on the other side of that threshold, and the deities that exist are our future selves. Our world bears all the hallmarks of one that is simulated. And, Rich's logic continues, who would be more likely to simulate humans than humans from the future? Our descendants. Godlike beings with the power to create their own universes. It's a very radical idea of the Creator. But for Rich, it's not without spirituality. One can ask, what are you really saying? Are you saying that the world is a simulation and we're just entities in some PlayStation 12 uh, game or something like that? I'm not saying that. I actually uh, think this is a, a very, very wonderful phenomenon. I, I take great solace in this. Uh, it shows that somewhere along the line we have evolved from, from nothing into self-awareness and that self-awareness has reached the stage now where we have, our future selves have become gods. This is a wonderful, uh, to me that's a very, very spiritual thing and that's where my spirituality comes from in, in seeing things like that. That's, to me that's a religion. It's been said that God fills in the cracks in our knowledge. Some see these cracks getting smaller. We see this constantly in physics, that we start out with something that looks complex, and as we look at its parts, its parts are simpler. Now, if you imagine some sort of creator, that assumes that there's something more complicated than the thing that got created. So to me, that's a step backwards in explaining a philosophically satisfying model. For others, the expansion of scientific knowledge will never fill in all the cracks. There'll always be room for faith, be it in a creator who is our descendant or in the gods of our ancestors. I think that the questions that arise from science, they give us some sort of um, notion of the existence of God, but they leave many other questions about God un unresolved. And we also, I think, are bound to recognize that we finite beings will never totally understand God. The human instinct that drives our scientific curiosity won't stop us from searching for answers. Perhaps one day soon, science will provide us with a new method to look up and out through the cosmic pane of glass that separates us from the true creator of our world, if there is one.